Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the new Viseart Minxet Attendu palette. So this is what the packaging looks like and obviously I will be delving into the eyeshadow application very soon. I've actually got the final look on right now but obviously please keep watching to find out how I created this look. I will also be doing swatches. I'll obviously tell you my honest opinions on what I think of the palette. But for those of you who don't know, Viseart is a makeup brand that I've never really delved into. It started off as a small Perusian brand and now it has extended into a global brand and I am so glad for it. You can see my final thoughts at the end. Viseart initially was created for professionals, for makeup artists. And really, they just wanted to create makeup that was HD proof. They wanted to create products that were pigmented, provided longevity, provided beautiful blendability. So obviously, as I go through this product, I will find out whether Viseart managed to achieve all the goals they've set themselves. I was originally interested in getting the four pan palettes that they recently released. However, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with four pan palettes and I don't often use them, I don't often gravitate towards them so it has to be something quite spectacular for me to want it. So I, I managed to resist and I'm so glad I did because now this Minx Set Attendu palette is out and it's 12 shades. So I love these sort of 12 shade pans because it's perfect for travelling, it's perfect for the handbag, it gives you more variety and choices. And the fact that it's so compact, I, I love the fact that it's not some massive brick that you have to carry in your bag and adds additional weight. It's really lightweight. So I can't wait to open it up and go through it with you guys. Whilst we're on the subject of the four pan palettes, my beautiful friend Sunny Blue did a review on the four pan palettes. So I would love for you to check it out as well. Give her a follow and a support after you've watched my video. I will add her link down below. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this video and I'll catch you on the other side. So let's get stuck into the palette. It is quite a compact size, so it's almost hard to believe that there are 12 shades in here. But this is what the Minxet Etendu palette looks like. This is the packaging. It's got the name of the palette on the front in gold writing. It's got this sort of like sheen to it, almost like a leopard print. And it's got a director's chair. When you pull it up, you, it reveals this. Now, I have heard mixed things about Viseart palettes. I've heard a lot of criticism about their palettes and how people felt that it was quite cheap. I know it's sort of like a cardboard fabric, but considering it's cardboard, it's actually really nice. Um, I like the way it kind of folds out almost like a wallet or a purse, and there's a mirror in there. So pretty much everything you need is in there, and it's just great to pop into your handbag or even perfect for travels. And this is what it looks like inside. This brand originally designed and created makeup products, specifically eyeshadows for makeup artists. So if you see, there's actually a little dip in the palettes and you can take out shades which are magnetic. I love this idea. I've obviously seen it when I worked as a makeup artist where you can buy specific palettes designed for makeup artists like MAC, Bobbi Brown, NARS, like you can buy these palettes where they're either magnetized or you just pop them in and out. But this is the first time I've seen this sort of um, feature on a palette that's sold to the regular consumer. You could just mix and match and swap it so you make the ideal palette for you. How incredible is that? So I'm already so, so impressed. Having a look at the shades, obviously you can see this is meant to be a warm palette. And you've got everything from like matte shades to shimmer shades and there are no sparkle. So it's a very wearable palette. So from the looks of it, there are five matte shades and seven shimmer shades. So I'll go ahead and swatch it for you now. So for the top row, going from top to bottom, there is Pesh 2, Suede, a name called, I think it's pronounced Savarin, and Cognac. Then going to the next four shades just here from top to bottom again. Sable, Ember, Apricot and Roseus. 
and then on to the last four shades starting from here chocolat 2 or chocolat de mahogany cointreau hannah now again i apologize about the lighting again the daylight is very very short and you know i prefer filming in daylight so what i'll do is i will swatch all the shades again post it on my instagram channel and i'll make sure that i add the link in my description bar so by the time this video goes out there will be a swatch of all the shades in natural daylight so I don't really have an eye look in mind because this is a very new palette for me, not only in terms of the brand, the palette, I didn't even open it up because I wanted to open it up on camera and experience a first impression with you guys. When I look at this palette, there are so many shades that immediately I think, yes, they're staple colors. So for example, this is the perfect eyeshadow base. This would be a great crease color. But also because it's matte, if you were to take this in your um, travels and you were desperate for a contour, you'd forgotten one, this could also work as a contour for the face. Then you've got this sort of deeper crease colour and then you've got a, a smoky colour that can also double up as a powder liner. So when I look at this palette, you've got all the basic shades to make a really decent warm day and night eye look. I'm not really a fan of purple, but for example, where I normally would just use up everything bar the purple, this is the kind of palette where I can switch it up and add a different shade to it. So what I'll do is I will go in with my eyeshadow primer of choice, which is the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base in Light. And do you know what guys, I'm feeling a smoky eye. So anyone with oily eyelids, um, and especially if you get a lot of transfer, I really recommend the NARS uh, Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. There's even a colourless one which you could also wear if you don't like the tint element, but I recommend it. And by the way, there's a huge difference between applying this and some concealer on your eyes because I wouldn't recommend concealer, it's just a lot of them are far too rich and they will, if anything, aid transfer and it does have the tendency to crease as well. So I'm going to go in with the base colour first and by popping a powder over a creamy base it's just going to help with not only longevity but creating a really smooth flawless base for um, easier application. It's just going to help with blendability. I really love this base. It's not too yellow, it's not too cool. Okay so that's perfect. And with the eyeshadow base you really want it to just add a tad bit of brightness so it opens everything up ready for other shadows. Then I'm going to go in with the shade Sable and sort of use that as my base colour. Then just to blend out the edges I'm going to go in with this shade here which I think is pronounced Savarin. And I'll just balance it out by doing the same on the other eye. So I've just blended a mix of the Sable and the Savarin. So it's just sort of like a smooth ombre effect. And obviously right now it's very matte. I just want to add a little bit of something now. So I might go in with the Cointreau right there. And this is obviously quite a rusty warm colour. I've just made the brush slightly wet. So you can see the rustiness is really building up nicely and it's added a little bit more fire to the eyes. Now I want to go in with Chocolat 2 or Chocolat 2 and just add a little bit of depth at the corners of the eyes. As you can see it's just added a little bit of depth and helped to bring out the eyes a little bit more into that like feline shape that I personally love. I'm then going to use a little bit of this ember shade with my finger and just pop it in the center. So as you can see that's added like a real pop of color in the center of my eye and then I'm going to add suede just there and again press it on with my finger but in the inner corner of my eye. So it's sort of like a, a three tonal eyeshadow on top. Then bottom of the lashes is going to be quicker, simpler. Then I don't want to close up my eye too much. So I'm going to go in with the sable and apply that to my lower lashes. 
just to give a little bit of definition. So as you can see, it's just added a little bit of depth to my eyes without closing it up. Obviously the darker this shade, the more likely it is to close up the eye. Then I'm going to go in with a color called Apricot, which is this gorgeous kind of rose gold color. And again, I'm going in with my finger and I'm just gonna place it in the center of my lower lid. This is a nice trick for um, if you want to open up your eyes is to have the light in the center of the bottom and the top so it just gives that impression of bigger eyes and I've just added a little bit more sway to the inner corner of my eyes to again open it up now I'm just going to quickly go off camera apply some liner and mascara and I'll be right back just quickly I used the house laboratories this is Lady Gaga's makeup line um, eyeliner liquid liner and it's in the color whiskey which is like a dark brown and I absolutely love this liquid liner it stays put it doesn't smudge love it then i used in my waterline the waterproof eyeliner by dior in intense brown so i literally used it for my upper waterline a trick with your eye makeup whether you do something really basic as no liner mascara or something intense like a smoky eye i would always recommend putting liner in the upper waterline just to close everything up and give it that polished look because trust me if you don't do that what you have is like what looks like gaps of skin in between your lashes so this just ensures this trick ensures that it just f closes everything up and gives it that finesse it can be in any color make sure it's not sparkly because it's going in the waterline and as long as it's waterproof it will last you i promise lastly with the mascara i applied the urban decay lash freak mascara this is the one that has a wand that looks like a li little bit like a torture tool but it gives dramatic lashes. What I love about the Urban Decay Lash Freak mascara is that it kind of gives you that clumpy mascara look, which not in a way where it's like, oh, this mascara is so crap. It's my lashes are cl all clumpy. It's kind of like a intentional clumpy look. And with a heavier smoky eye, you can afford to go with a more dramatic mascara. For my lower lashes, I went in with the Caution Extreme Lash Mascara by Hourglass, just to give a little bit of something something to my lower lashes so this Viseart palette it has a shelf life of 36 months and it has 18 grams in total product weight it cost me $44 which I'm not sure exactly what it is in pounds but I'll have a look and I'll pop the the price on the screen now for you I got it from the Beautylish website and it didn't take long at all for it to arrive so I'm very happy with the the service and the delivery from Beautylish this is called Attendu because it's an extended palette and almost like a part two to apparently another original palette which is Theory in Minx. They wanted to make sure they created a warm tone palette because not all cool, cool tones suit everybody and I completely agree with that. The thing is, even people with cool tones can wear warm tones, but warm tone people can't wear cool tones, if that makes sense. And sometimes I in, I just can't gravitate towards cool tones. I have tried it, some work, majority don't. So the fact that this is an all warm toned palette, it would literally suit anybody. Any colour tone, any eye colour, doesn't matter, it would suit everybody. So my final thoughts on this palette, I absolutely love it. Versatility, it, sh it blends well, it's super pigmented and honestly, having tried it now, it's so creamy, so blendable. I was so impressed by the matte shades, which sounds so weird because I generally find that majority of shimmer shades are actually quite easy to apply and blend, but it's the matte shades that can be quite patchy or really, really tricky to blend and make it look smooth. So when I tried them, they're so, so creamy. There was a little bit of fallout as there is with most um, eyeshadow powders, but obviously it depends on the brand and the level of fallout can vary. But with this one, it was just a tiny amount. I would literally just apply a little bit to my brush, dust it off and apply. And honestly, there is zero fallout under my eyes, which is incredible because I've done a smoky eye. So the fact that, you know, I, by the way, I dust off with all my eyeshadow palettes doesn't mean that I don't get fallout. So I am so impressed that I don't have any fallout. I don't have to clean up my under eye or reapply my concealer. I am now, as a result of this palette, going to definitely keep an eye out on other Viseart eyeshadow palettes and 
If you haven't seen my top five eyeshadow palettes video already, I will link it down below. Please go and check it out. But this has now made it into my top five. This is the final look. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share with whoever you think would be interested in this content. I would also love to hear your thoughts. Please comment down below on whether you've tried Vizzy Art before. What are your opinions? Do you like Vizzy Art? Let me know what your favorite products are and I will definitely check them out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Butterflies in my stomach, butterflies in my chest.